Okay, I've got loads of ideas for videos on this channel, but I've got no time, I've got no time. Uh, I'm not complaining. This week I got orders for two full Eternity Rings and two Skull Beads I have to set stones in. So that's great, very grateful to you guys ordering. Full Eternity Rings, there's one I'm making now, and guess the way I'm doing it, I'm doing it exactly, because both of the rings are the cut down style, I'm making them exactly how I showed you to make them in my video, because I practice what I preach. I'm a real teacher. Watch out for the fake ones. This ring I knocked up for that other video. It's only silver, that's a, that's a sapphire in there. Um, I'm gonna polish it, take a photo, change the thumbnail, uh, like title screenshot for that video, and then I'll take it apart and take my stone back. Thank you very much. Got this out of my little junk box and I got that. Don't know why these things exist. I think that was when I was gonna make this kind of boodle style rain dance ring and I didn't like how chunky that band was. Um, and then this, I have no idea why this exists, but it's gonna be useful now. So I'm using this shank and then this little collet, I'll straighten it all up and we'll do another version of this one. It's probably gonna be easier because that little curve, that is like a barrel shape collet and that outer curve was making it tricky to put it in the shank nicely. Um, this one's not gonna be like that. This one's just gonna be straight sides with a daylight hole. So let's get on with it. Right, my last shank was out, again out of my junk box and this was thinner than I would have chosen to use. This one's chunkier than I would have chosen to use, but I'm not changing it because I ain't got time. So if you're interested, I've got 1.6 deep by 1.9 wide. And then this is uh, just over five, 5.2 deep. And the thickness is 1.1, call it. Uh, yeah, start off with something. Yeah, 1.1 is quite good because it's quite thick and it gives you a bit of space for cleaning it up after without making it too thin once you've got it all perfectly flat and polished. And if you're making something that's going to be cast, consider after casting it's going to need more papering and polishing so you lose a bit more metal again. I am just going to rip through this video. Right, so this was basically just a straight strip of metal turned up with these pliers. I'd love to know the name of these. Uh, it's like a half snipe, half flat. It's like a hybrid of these two pli pliers. These, these pliers, I put them together, put some Barry White on, they got romantic and the next day their child was these and uh, try and straighten that out a little bit if I can. Putting it on this mandrel thing, it's like a mini ring stick which I said I wasn't going to use last time, today I'm using it. Just gives me a bit of a head start getting things round. If you got one of these what I do is I hook it on there and I'm kind of pushing it up as I hammer in it. And use it to knock it off as well. Again, it's not really a tool you need, but I kind of like using it when I get the opportunity. And I've got an oval one as well. All right, but apart from that, just goes in your collet punch, straighten out the rest of the way. I forgot to mention work to a stone. This is a four mil CZ. It's all I've got, but it's four mil. Um, and four mil, five mil is just a little bit too big for this collet. I could punch it out, but uh, I don't wanna. And then four mil, four mil's about right probably. Just need to hammer it down a little bit. Um, I would have been more accurate if I was making it for a stone. So I'm just banging one of these. This will round off the outside. Right, tap it a little bit, make sure it's flat, like perfectly vertical before you start really belting it one. Right, gone round. Looks like it shrank a little bit. My hands are all shaky because I've been doing press ups. Uh, yeah, that's about right. So now I'm going to clean up that collet perfectly. Parallel pliers. And then just gently going up and down, keeping it straight. I don't want to make one end thinner than the other. Rotate it a bit. Go around. Make 
seat lower. So it's the outer diameter I concentrate on when I'm checking the stone. And uh, yeah, you've got to think ahead, you've got to consider, you're going to file it back to get it flat. Get me a bit more of a coarse wither on there. Turn it on. It's going to go flying out of there. I got an idea for a new kind of show on the channel. It's called Making Enemies. Because when I'm searching what other people are doing, I find lots of people. People are just making jewellery and showing what they're doing. That's fine, I've got no problem with that at all. But it's these jewellery schools. And they're showing you, trying to sell their online courses, charging quite a lot of money, and just making things so badly. Like really terrible technique. So I'm probably not going to do it, but I'm tempted. And I'll, I'll just pick on one jewelry school and then go through their videos. And I could literally just do I could just narrate over the whole video saying what they're doing is wrong, why it's wrong, and then talk about a better way to do it. I'm probably not going to do that, but. That's what I feel like when I'm watching them. Oh, it's quite upsetting. There's people out there telling, teaching to do things wrong. Right, let me see my stone on there again. But that's not to say my way is the only way. You can do things a lot of different ways. But there's different correct ways, if that makes sense. And then there's just ways which are really bad advice. Oh, where's my thing? Oh, I've got this thing. I, li I like using this. Again, not one of those things you need, but it's kind of fun to use. It's like a little vice for, for collets, and you can get perfect sort of flat ends on stuff. But it's almost worth learning to do it without this vice, just so you can. But I like, I like using it. Boom. So basically, I know I've, I've got a bit of a head start because I had this already made, but uh, make, make a wedding ring basically. And uh, I'll put, try and put a card up on the video at this moment. So there's a link to a previous video I made. I did one in real time, it, literally minutes you can knock one of these up. It's just a strip of metal turned up into a circle. That's all it is. Uh, so again, like my last one, um, get it the size, finger size you want now and get it perfectly round. Um, I just hold, just try and get your collet on there. You're going to cut, cut out either side of the solder joint. Because if the size is correct, uh, that's something you haven't got to worry about. But um, it's nice to not have a solder joint at the bottom if possible. So try and position it, just put a little... Just as a guide, I just mark it a little bit. Scratch a line in there with a bit of pen, whatever, just so I've got a, a kind of guide to know how much to cut out. And even though I could guess, you could just put it down. You could just put that there and just cut out what you think. There's a couple of times, literally years and years ago, where I cut out too much and I ballsed it up and I had to start again what I was making. So just with that little bit of... Um, bad luck at those times. I've just got a habit now of just marking gently uh, where I'm going to cut. I cut out less than you need to have cut out. So you can file it back exactly where you want it. And I'm not cutting any fancy shapes out of this one like I did that previous ring. Um, I'm just cutting straight down. This should be a bit 
easier because that last shank I did was very thin so it's prone to bending about. This one's got a bit more strength to it which helps me a lot. Now be careful with this once you cut it open you don't want to if you knocked it perfectly round and it's the correct size you can't then open it up or close it up to get your collet in because you're changing the finger size and you're making it not round anymore so you have to just be very careful with that keep it flat keep it round and gently cut back to get the collet to fit and it's always very tempting to open it up a little bit just to squeeze it that last bit in but try try not to do that so uh, just a my one just a quick file and then I'm gonna phrase out a slightly rounded edge so that slots in nicely Get these ends nice and parallel. And make sure, have a look at the ring from the side, imagine the center point and make sure you're going straight down either side of the center, not kind of going like that, because then the collet doesn't sit in nicely. And I really hate the effect of when you've got a collet in a ring and it's not going down to the center. Sometimes it can go in just slightly to the side. There's a circle, but it's sat going straight up from the side of the center and it looks odd. Once you notice it, it's a really annoying thing. So try to avoid that. All right, so what we got, what we got? Okay, that's good. Just going for these cheap bad boys. Go for a quite a wide one because it's more similar to the curvature of your collet. At this moment, I like these diamond burrs because they're less, less catchy. They, they grind away rather than cut like the, the teethy cylinder phrases do. But it's up to you, whatever works for you. Again, I'm thinking about the angles. I can't start phrasing away at the wrong angle just because it might be quicker to get that edge and that edge. I just want to just phrase it down, like keeping that at the angle where I want the curve to be. What may help sometimes, we start with a thin one and then work your way up to one, a bigger size. It helps keep it really central. Because they rotate one direction, they pull more one way than the other. So, it is a bit of a trick to getting it to cut down direct in the centre. Okay, that's good. That's better than this one. Let me do that again. I think in my videos it's important to show you me doing a lot of the work because there's no good me just saying and then phrase that out and put that in and then just edit to it all finished because it leaves a lot of questions rather than answers. Okay, I'm to give another file. I'm gonna file by this side. Straighten it out once more, just cut it back a bit. Give it angles. Well, there's a place that on. You look at it from the side. You can look at it from this way. Make sure this is dead straight. And then make sure that's dead straight. When you're working in platinum, you've got to be really accurate with your joins. It's no good having a, a collet in a shank and then just filled up a gap with solder. You're not going to get away with it after polishing. Yes, I know I just opened that up a bit, but I just want to see how it's fitting. Fitting all right. It's opened up, so my edge has gone out like that, so that explains that top gap. So I just need to cut it more at the same angle, and then it should just slide in there. But 
but my style of making things is like I cut out not enough on purpose yeah I probably went a bit too far so I can be really accurate I'm adjusting it adjusting it adjusting it and then it fits perfectly rather than cutting out this much with the saw and then having just enough to get it right because it leaves very little room for manoeuvre to get yourself out of trouble because so say I phrased it out and I sort of went down one side more than the other once I start straightening it out I've cut away too much metal so I like to just to make it give myself a bit of a safety net give myself a lot of work cutting it back so looking at that looking at my angles they're going straight down this one is not This one's a little bit off. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, that's fitting all right. Let me, no, I was gonna do that one a bit more. A bit more, come on, Chris, sort out. Is that in the center? What's going on here? <laughs> gently, gently. Right, when you're lining it up, make sure make sure that's in straight, not like that the edges are touching perfectly, but that's all like wonky. That one's got to be again thinking about that imaginary point in the center. Everything's straight down to it. So this is where we are. That's ready for soldering. Let's give you a close up of my work. If you can see that. See the curves in the end. That slides in. Let's get that straight. So that just holds in position. Might have to tweak it a little bit to get it perfectly straight. I'd be looking before soldering, making sure that's perfectly straight in there. It's going up the center. Um, looking in here, checking the gaps there and there. Is it all gappy or is it nice and tight? Like I always talk about it, tight joins, really important. Got, got to be tight. And a camera that focuses is always beneficial as well. But yeah, tight, tight, tight all around and then underneath as well. That's what we're aiming for. So now I'm thinking about soldering that in. I mean, this is still way too high. <laughs> so again, thinking about that imaginary point in the center of the ring, like got these nice parallel, parallel sides. Just imagine those going straight down. They should go either side of the center. So that is like directly vertical, boing, out from the center, which I think it isn't. I used to tilt that way a little bit. Uh, then I'd look at it from the side and making sure that like, these angles are correct. So it should be going straight up following the shank. Um, if you've been careful with your shank and kept it nice and round, you shouldn't have any issues with that going there and then that one going up that side. That's such a problem, like really bulls you up. So make sure that's really, really perfectly straight. So it should, everything should just line up nicely. Just look around it, you know, and then that way, obviously no, no gaps, everything's all ready for soldering. I've got a feeling some other jewelers will be telling you to get the the binding wire out and wire it all in position. Just, you never need this for, for doing that. Like, it just gets in the way and makes a mess. If you cut it correctly and neatly, look, just, I'm not careful with that at all and it's not moving, it just stays in position. Take it out, put it in, whatever. 
just a minor adjustment. It's all very made it very easy for myself for because I worked accurately and carefully. Newsflash, I've decided to hold that upside down and then add solder from the bottom and then it should just flood around nicely rather than adding solder on the top. There's a risk of the solder kind of sticking to the shank, going up the collet, then it all gets a bit kind of messy when you clean it up. You can do it, but it's so much better if the solder is just like a nice little bead edge, like brr, 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 and then all it takes, a little zip of a rubber wheel, ding, down the join, and then it's a, a beautiful join. And it's all very nicely cleaned up. I do work in like precious metals mostly. There's only these YouTube videos I use silver for. Because, you know, platinum and gold is an expensive metal, so I don't want to... I don't want to be chopping up and melting things that I might need for actually making orders. Right, now I've lost my solder. Okay, I'm just going to do this, like, you know about soldering, yeah? So just continue. A little bit of solder, not too much. Take your time. Be neat and tidy. Keep your flux clean. All the usual, all the usual soldering advice. All right, so soldered in, nice and straight. See that? Nice and straight, nice and straight, eh, la, 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 la. Right, okay, the only really last bit of advice I can give you is uh, filing that inner bit out. Um, put it in your block, half round ring file. Um, when you're filing, uh, if you've got a lot of work to do, I tend to do that edge and then that edge, but then keep checking it, make sure you don't go too far. You don't want to go up, uh, put a curve in past where, where this inner circle edge goes because then you've gone a little bit egg shape. Um, but yeah, try and get it flat and it's hard to feel what is flat. So I recommend when you start doing this, um, just look all the time, stop filing and look from the side so you know how far you gotta go. And then I mentioned before these little cutoff wheels, um, if you've got some worn down or you can even put, put two together, wear them down on a bit of stone and then that's quite a handy thing to put inside a ring. And then you can get that edge right down without touching the shank at all. Because the whole time you're filing the actual shank, you're what I would call ballsing it up. Especially if you've got a parallel flat, because you're taking, taking a bit of distance out of it. Um, so really only try and file the collet. Try not to touch the shank at all. I mean, you will touch it with the file, but really try and keep it to a minimum. Let's do a bit. Oh, this file is so worn out. I really need to spend a bit of money on new tools. Yeah, turn it around as well. So what you may find is what you think is dead straight isn't usually always tilted up or down. So if you keep rotating the ring around, you kind of protect yourself from yourself a little bit more. You're less likely to fight it too much at one angle. I'm putting quite a lot of weight on the file, so feels like it's cutting more per action. But I go carefully with this, I really don't want to hit the shank. I'm going to look from the side. Yeah, doing it correctly, I just need to do more of what I've been doing. This bloody file. Would have finished it by now if it was new. These coarse paper, they, they do actually a good job of cutting away metal. So especially when he's got quite a, a thick one, um, that's quite a good thing to get the last little bit down perfect. But certainly into the majority of your work with a file.
Again, being careful, hold that at the correct angle. These are good. Um, I'm going to contact the company in Germany I buy these from and ask them if it's okay if I mention them and put a link to their website on my page because uh, I'm sure they'll be fine with it. Um, but these are really good and you can't buy them in trade shops in the UK. I don't know about whatever country you're in. Um, but they cut really well. You can sharpen them, you can flatten them, but they're, they're quite hard. Um, so that when you cut a blade on there like I've just done, uh, it stays quite sharp. The ones you buy in the UK are really soft, which have their moments are useful. This is quite a soft one. Um, but for doing things like this, they're no good. They just go blunt immediately. So let's, um, let's do a bit. This one got too much solder on there. They take a bit of practice to use, but they really will affect the quality of your finished pieces. So compare, I mean, that's smooth enough for polishing now, and it's really sharp. If I had to get a square needle file, which is what I think people would do without these rubber wheels and start filing up the side, definitely put in a big line, score line up the side there, which then has to be papered out, which means your balls and up your roundness there. And then you're wrapping bits of paper around your needle files and oh, it's just uh, so much more work and much more difficult to get a good finish. But I literally think you cannot get a, as good a finish as a rubber wheel doing it with the needle files. A bit tricky on top because that's a bit of a rounded curve. Still sharp. And if you've got a, a ring in platinum, like a platinum full of turn eve, all these like scallops going around each stone, um, really need one of these. I really, really need it to do a good job. And then get them all cut back, nice and sharp, ready for polishing. What I do is I kind of, my technique is I kind of carefully get rid of the solder without trying to touch the metal. And then the last thing, I'll just go zip down it. So let's just get a real perfect little line on it. If, you, if you're in a jewellery school and you're the only person using these, like your finished pieces are going to look it's just so much more high quality. Everything's going to be really sharp and nice if you use them well. Right, check my work. 10 times loop, I can always do. Okay, okay, yep, yep, yep. No, it's not sharp. Cut that down, and this one. Quite a lot of solder still there. All right, apologies, this video is, this ring is very similar to the one I just did. <laughs> but at least I'm showing me actually doing the work a lot more. So it might be useful or interesting in a different kind of way. 
Um, but single stones is a nice thing to practice and learn at home. So it's, I may do more versions because I've got like a million different ways to do these. Um, the, the actual techniques of putting them together are going to be very similar, but I mean the actual finished thing. There are many, many variations of what you can end up with. Alright, okay, um, what do we use next? One of these little things, a little mini paper whizzer. You can make them. I'm going to do a video showing you how to make these little things. If you can't buy them, I don't think you can buy them. Oh, definitely clean out the inside of that collet. Get a... Get a ball phrase that just about fits, or that one way doesn't fit, but anyway, yeah, get a ball phrase that just about goes in there, or goes in there just about a little bit easily, and you can always put it in there, and as I drag it out, I'm doing this, I'm kind of rifling it up, like zip, 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 and if you haven't got one that just about fits. It's nice if you've got one, yeah, just cuts gently as you push it down, and you get a really nice, beautiful, machined edge inside, and um, once you've done that, stick one of these in there, smooths out a little bit more, and then use bristle brushes, I don't have one here, um, like a little pencil bristle brush, polish it out, so before setting, and it's all polished out and nice, and the stone will look its best if it's all polished underneath it, and it will just, when people hold it and look at it, it's just all polished inside, it all looks like a proper nice handmade quality bit of jewellery. I have quite enjoyed making this, but I haven't really got time. Very gently, I'm really not trying to change the shape of metal at all, I'm just going over the surface of it. And of course, that's way too high, but it's got a kind of a look about it. A little bit of contemporary jewellery. A lot of professional jewellers don't like contemporary jewellery. They just see it as all like arty, farty. I've heard that a lot from people, but I kind of like it. I like, I like people who are like pushing, pushing the envelope of design and wearability and what's possible and just, just creating little mini artworks as jewellery. I really like it. So yeah, if you're, if you're making wacky jewellery, that's great. Please continue. Okay, done. Not including lowering the collet. So, that's it. I'm off now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it was useful or interesting, at least. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share the notification bell, all that. And stay tuned, because I will be...